Hi children, today we are going to study about force and pressure. The chapter's name is force and pressure. This is chapter 11th of class 8. The main contents of this chapter are first one, force a push or a pull. Second, forces are due to interaction. Third, exploring forces. Fourth, a force can change the state of motion. Fifth, a force can change the shape of an object. Sixth, contact forces. Seventh, non-contact forces. Eighth, pressure. Ninth, pressure exerted by liquids and gases. Tenth, atmospheric pressure. The first and most important topic that we are going to deal with as force. You might have heard about the term force, but do you know how to define and explain force? Let us try to learn more about force. All of you are interested in playing with balls, isn't it? We are going to explain force with the help of example of ball. Consider a ball placed on a ground. It is at rest or it is stationary. How will you say it is stationary? It is stationary because it is not changing its position with time. We have to move that ball from rest. What will you do to move a ball at rest? To move a ball, you can give a kick or a push. Or you can hit the ball or throw the ball. By this form means you can move the ball which is at rest. That is, you can either kick or give a push or hit or throw a ball to move that ball from rest. Consider a ball which is moving on the ground. You want to move it faster. What will you do to move the ball faster? You will hit or strike the ball strongly with a stick. You can also give a strong push or kick to it. By this way you can move the ball faster. Let us consider another case. A ball is moving towards you with a great speed. If you want to stop that ball, what will you do? Certainly you will catch it, isn't it? So you will catch the ball to, move, uh, to stop a ball which is moving towards you. In the previous case, if you want to change the direction of the ball which is moving towards you, what will you do? Either you have to place a barrier so that it rebounds or you have to flick the ball using a stick so that it moves towards any other direction. From all these examples, what can you infer? In all the previous examples, a force has been applied on a ball when it is kicked, pushed, thrown, cash or flicked. That is, in order to move an object, to change the direction of an object, a force is necessary. Let us consider other examples. The first picture shows a man lifting a heavy box. Second one shows someone is picking grass from the soil. The third one shows a boy opening the door. And the fourth picture shows a horse pulling a loaded cart. The fifth picture, a man is closing the door. These are certain tasks that we come across in our daily life. If we analyze these actions, we can see that these actions can be basically grouped under two categories namely push and pull.
that is these actions can be categorized as push or pull let us see which actions come under the categories push and pull shutting a door or a box kicking an object hitting a ball poking pressing squeezing stepping ringing drilling all this comes under the category push whereas lifting dragging opening stretching tugging ringing etc comes under the category pull these are the um, examples of such actions which comes under the categories push and pull from all this we can conclude that a push or pull is necessary to move an object a push or pull on an object is called force force can also be defined as the effect through which the position or motion of an object is changed a push or pull of on an object is called force effects of forces let us try to know what happens when a force is applied to a body when a force is applied to a body a stationary object moves a moving object moves faster moving object changes its direction moving object stops and shape of object changes thus we can see that the force changes the velocity of mass of the object and it starts to accelerate or decelerate this is the reason that it depends on mass and acceleration of the object forces are due to interaction Do you know how the force acts? First picture shows two girls pulling each other. They are pulling each other, and the second one shows the uh, two girls are trying to push each other. The third picture shows the cow and the man appears to pull each other, and fourth picture there is tug and tug of war competition, and the two teams are pulling each other to win the game. in all these situations we can see that both of them applies force on each other so we can say that at least two objects must interact for a force to come into play there should be two objects which should interact each other for a force to come into play an interaction of one object with the another results in a force between the objects exploring forces the person tries to move a heavy object placed on the ground what happens he could not move why why he could not move that object because the force given is not sufficient the force applied by the person is not sufficient to move that heavy object towards the front consider this case the first person could not move the heavy box so another person joins and tries to move the object and both of them succeeds it moves why because forces applied in the same direction gets added up so the force applied becomes sufficient to overcome the weight of the box and it moves Consider a different situation. 
two persons are trying to push a heavy box from opposite directions with the same force. What will happen? They push and push till they get tired, but it will not move or they can't move it. What is the reason for it? Two equal but opposite forces acting on an object makes the object immovable. A fat person comes and stands opposite to a lean man. Both of them push the boss from opposite directions. What will happen? The boss will move in the direction in which the fat man pushes it. That is, if two unequal forces act in the opposite directions, the net force acting on it is the difference between the forces. From all these examples, we can infer that a force could be smaller or larger. The strength of a force is usually expressed in magnitude. It also has direction. If more than two forces act on an object, the effect on the object is due to the net force acting on it. A force can change the state of motion. What do we mean by state of motion? Let us see. First of all, force applied in the direction of motion increases its speed. We already saw that. Then, force applied opposite to the direction of motion decreases its speed. And force applied to a moving object changes its direction of motion. All the three cases we have studied earlier and from all these conditions that is the increase of speed, decrease of speed and the change of direction of motion all this change in either speed or direction of an object or both is described as a change in a state of motion. What is state of motion? The state of motion of an object is described by its speed and direction of motion. A state of rest means state of zero speed. An object may be at rest or in motion. Both are a state of motion. So, only if we know the speed and direction of motion, the state of motion can be described. Force can change the shape of an object. Let us try to understand how force changes the shape of an object. A simple example explains it. Look at a lump of dough. It is pressed using hand. Is there any change in state of motion? No. Then what change occurs? Similarly, Look at an accident scene. The car is being crushed as a big rock fell on it. In the second picture, what is the man doing? He is trying to bend a rope. Is there any change in a state of motion in both these cases? No. But what is the change? A change occurred in these two pictures and the previous case. What is the change? The shape of the object changed. There is a change in the shape of the object. So we can conclude that a force can change the shape of an object. Contact forces. They are forces that come into action when two objects are in contact. It can be direct or through drop, stick, etc. We have learned earlier that forces are due to interaction between bodies. Different types of contact forces are 
muscular force, force of friction. Muscular force. Consider a loaded cart pulled by bullets or hoses. Here the animals exert muscular force to pull the cart. Second picture. To lift a bucket of water, where does the force come from? It is caused by the action of muscles in our body. Similarly, in the case of squeezing of lemon, we are exerting a muscular force. Since muscular force can be applied only when it is in contact with an object, it is called contact force. Friction A ball stops automatically after moving some distance. We feel difficult to push an object placed on rough surface. We hold things using our hands. A car or scooter comes to rest once its engine is switched off. A boat comes to stop once you stop rowing. In all this, force of friction acts between the surfaces. Force of friction is a contact force and acts on all moving objects in a direction opposite to its direction of motion. This is a contact force because the two surfaces are in contact with each other when it is moving and in that case the force of friction occurs. Non-contact forces Forces that come into action even when the bodies are not in contact are called non-contact forces. Example of non-contact forces Magnetic forces Electrostatic force Gravitational force Nuclear force Electrostatic force. Look into the first picture. After brushing your dry hair with a comb, try to bring it near small pieces of paper. You can see that the paper sticks to the comb. Second case. Rub an inflated balloon with your hand. When the balloon is brought near pieces of paper, it gets attracted to the surface of the balloon. The third picture. A plastic straw is suspended from the edge of a table using a thread. Take another straw. Rub its free end with a sheet of paper. Bring the wrapped end of the straw to the suspended straw. It gets attracted. Rub both the straws using the paper. Then bring them to nearer. We can see that the straws get repelled. This force exerted by a charged body on another charged or uncharged body is called electrostatic force. Since there is no contact between two objects, it is called non-contact force. The force exerted by a charged body on another uncharged body or another charged body is called electrostatic force. Gravitational force A ball falls to the ground when it is slipped from our hand. Anything falls to the ground when it is free to fall. Nothing will rise upwards without any external force. Because the earth pulls them, this force is a force of gravity. It acts on all objects, but we are not aware of it. Every object in the universe exerts a force on every other object. This is the gravitational force. It is also a non-contact force. Magnetic force. Two magnets are placed with the north poles facing each other. When we try to bring one magnet to the other, it shows a strong repulsion because light poles repel each other. When we try to bring the north pole of magnet towards the south pole of another magnet, they soon get attracted because unlike poles of the magnet attract each other. Objects are not in contact here, yet force acts, so it is a non-contact force. A magnet can exert a force on another magnet 
without being in contact with it. So, this is a non-contact force. Now, we are going to discuss about another important topic of this chapter that is pressure. Try to push a nail to a wooden plank by his head. It's a little bit tough, isn't it? Okay, then try to push the nail by his pointed end. It seems quite easier. Why is it so? Why broad strap bags are more comfortable than narrow strap bags? Narrow straps hurt our hand much more if we carry weight than the other. Porters use a round piece of cloth on their heads when they carry heavy loads. Why? By this, they increase the area of contact of load with head. So, pressure is reduced. It is easier to cut vegetables using sharp pointed knife than blunt knife. In all these cases, the area over which the force is applied plays a key role in making tasks easier. There is some connection between force and the area upon which force is applied. The force acting on unit area of a surface is called pressure. Pressure equal to force by area on which it acts, that is P equal to F by A. Smaller the area, larger will be the pressure. Because P is inversely proportional to A, we can say that smaller the area, the larger will be the pressure. Pressure exerted by liquids. Do you know liquids also exert pressure? Let us check it with an experiment. Take a transparent glass tube. Take a rubber sheet and stretch it tightly over one end of the pipe. Tie it tightly. Hold the tube straight. Pour some water into the pipe. What can you see? The rubber sheet bulges out. Pour some more water. The rubber sheet bulges out more. From this we can say that liquid sets of pressure on the bottom of the container and it depends on the height of the liquid column. That is, pressure is directly proportional to height of the liquid column. As the height of the liquid column increases, pressure also increases. Consider another experiment. Take a plastic bottle. Fits a glass tube near the bottom as in figure. There should not be any leak from the joint. Take care of that by sealing it with molten pads. Take a rubber sheet and fix it tightly on the other side of the glass tube. Pour water in the bottle up to half. What do you observe? The rubber sheet bulges out. Pour some more water and check. The bulge increases, isn't it? So we can see that the liquids also exert pressure on the walls of the container. And again, this depends on the height of the liquid column. That is why, in the second picture, the water flows out to a large distance from a hole near the bottom of the glass. As the height of the hole from bottom increases, pressure decreases. Or else, we can say that as depth increases, pressure increases. In the third picture, we can see that a plastic bottle is taken. Holes are made near the bottom or around the bottle. The holes are at the same height from the bottom. The bottle is filled with water. The water is coming out of the holes and falls at the same distance from the bottle. What does this, in this indicate? That is, liquid sets of equal pressure at the same depth. So, what can you infer from all this? Pressure exerted on the sides of the container depends on the height of this column. A liquid exerts pressure on the walls of the container. Also, liquids exert equal pressure at the same depth.
pressure exerted by gases. You can see that gases also exert pressure. What happens when you prick an infl inflated balloon? The air inside the balloon hoses out with great speed, that is, the balloon bursts out. Similarly, what happens when a circle tube punctures? The air hushes out, isn't it? Will you be able to inflate a balloon which has holes in it? No. So all this shows that gases also exert pressure on the walls of the container. Gases also exert pressure on the walls of their container. Atmospheric pressure. What is atmosphere? How much it extends? The envelope of air all around us is called atmosphere. It extends up to many kilometers above the earth's surface. The layers of atmosphere can be named as troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere. The pressure exerted by the atmospheric air is called atmospheric pressure. How to calculate the atmospheric pressure? Weight of air in a column of height of atmosphere and area 100 square centimeter is as large as 1000 kilogram. Atmospheric pressure is the weight of air in a column of unit area. It is quite large. As the height of the atmosphere increases, the air particles there becomes thinner and thinner. So, as altitude increases, pressure decreases. We can easily understand how large the atmospheric pressure is by the action of rubber suckers. You might have seen different types of rubber suckers to hang different things on the wall. Do you notice where the sucker usually sticks well? Yes, it sticks strongly on smooth plain surface. When we press the sucker on the surface, the air between the cup and the surface is expelled or escaped out. In that case, the atmospheric pressure outside the sucker acts on it and keeps it attached to the surface. To pull the sucker off the surface, we have to apply a force which is large enough to overcome the atmospheric pressure. Do you get an idea of the magnitude of atmospheric pressure now? It is quite large. If we create vacuum in between the sucker and the surface to which it is fixed, then no one could ever pull the sucker off from it. The sucker sticks to the surface because atmospheric pressure acts on it. So to pull it, we must apply a force greater than the atmospheric pressure.